me is one of the greatest things in my life that I've been able to hold up a show like that in Florida. It's a cross country, cross nations, international. It's magnificent. The show of my life was when my brother closed the deal with John Sofer, buying the piece of land. And well, that was our starting point. And we really went ahead and built something magnificent for, for the whole community. La verdad es un gran día para mí hoy y la Safra Synagogue salvó mi vida de pelear tanto con mi mujer porque no voy a la sinagoga porque es lejos. Ahora como vivo al lado de la sinagoga se cambió todo. La verdad estoy muy feliz de vivir cerca de la sinagoga y enfrente de la sinagoga. Y gracias a la comitiva y la gente en dirección de Safra y al rabino y al presidente y por este gran homenaje. Me dio mucha alegría en la sinagoga Safra cuando dejaron a mi nieto que tiene 10 años de leer la perashá y leer la haftará, martillo. Y también el día que bajaron el Sebertura, que vino Rabamar, era un día muy, muy especial. Ay, the Edmund Safra Synagogue in Turnberry means so much to me and all of the people from New York and Miami who loved Edmund Safra. Edmund Safra was a visionary and a great man in our community. We were so happy when we were able to open this synagogue. His wife and he uh, donated most of the money to open it with the Brackas. And uh, it's so nice to have it. It's a bastion for everyone from around the world to come and enjoy when they come to Florida and pray and uh, have a good time. Thank you very much. The name means a lot. It it's a beautiful place to worship. We have an astounding rabbi and a great organization there. It's one of the finest shows I've ever been to in my life. And I lived a long one. Anyway, may it be the next thousand years. Such a shul means to me that it's a, a, a wonderful group of people that blend together as one. There was all walks of life from many different countries, many various different dialects, etc., etc., and we all act as one family. It's marvelous. If someone's missing, someone comes in, we greet them with the same warmth as if they were family that's missing for a couple of days or a couple of weeks. It's a magnificent shul. It extends its hand out to everyone. It's an international symbol, a magnet that draws everyone from all corners of the globe. Hope everyone has a great evening, enjoys themselves as we go forward. Thank you very much. Thank you for attending. Thank you for participating. Thank you for joining our journal also. We're finding ourselves in this most special night that we're celebrating the 10th anniversary of the Bet Edmond J. Safra Synagogue. I was told to keep it brief and short, but it's difficult because the Safra Synagogue means to me and to my family and to so many, many, many people from all over the world a fountain of blessing, of camaraderie and community growth. So Hashem should bless the Kahal, should be with great Aslaha this event and the next years should be with as much success as we have had now, and we should always find each other in good semachot. Amen. I'm uh, honored to be here tonight uh, with this celebration of the dinner of the uh, Safra Synagogue of uh, Turnberry, Florida. I feel we are sister congregation in uh, Safra, New Jersey. I'm honored to be with the honorees tonight. Wish them best of luck. And God bless you all. Special Hazak Baruch to Rabbi Gilamidi for all the beautiful activities, activities that they have in the Minyanim. Uh, many, many more with Rav Hashem in the future. Amen. The shul is my life. Without the shul, we have nothing. It's a community, it's the center, it's the epicenter of everything we have. We love it, and we're very grateful and thankful for the wonderful years that we've been with it. I've been with the Safra Synagogue for how long? Many, many years. Many, many years. And to me, the Safra Synagogue means the finest, the classiest, synagogue as far as I know and I have been to a lot of places we have the nicest community we have the best people that attend here our front office is second to none I think we must have the finest rabbi in the east of the Mississippi and uh, this synagogue is really a pleasure to come to and I look forward to it every time that I come I look forward to coming to the synagogue and we have first-class people and 
God should keep this going for another 120 years. Thank you. On a personal level, uh, I come here every summer, spend the whole summer here at the Safra Synagogue in Turnberry, and it, it's become a home away from home, a synagogue away from home. I enjoy very, very much the prayers, the people, the congregation, and of course, Rabbi Galamidi and the entire uh, people there. It has been a uh, truly enjoyable summers that I have had for all these years here together. On a professional level, as a rabbi, I have participated in the, this congregation in the rabbinical leadership and in its growth for the last 10 years. So it gives me great pleasure, satisfaction, and not had to see it reach this milestone. Thank you very much. Safra Synagogue for me, it's like being a second home where I feel very, very uh, in peace and I love to go to the Safra Synagogue. I think it was the best thing that happened in Aventura and it's an international synagogue where we meet with all our friends from all over the world and it's such a nice feeling, it's such a nice good energy and thanks to David Bracca Ivor and all the board for uh, having this nice synagogue and let everybody enjoy it from all over the world. I love Safra Synagogue and uh, congratulations for the 10th anniversary. When I live just a few feet from it and it unites our community. People walk out, there's couples there every Saturday and they, and, and they, they walk out so happy. It's a go gorgeous building and wonderful services, wonderful. First of all, by the design, it's impressing, amazing. It's as though you daven, you pray at the Ritz-Carlton. This is one thing concerning the design. But more so, with Rabbi Galimidi, it means for me a lot of learning and very interesting learning, well said, well taught. And I thank the Safra for giving me this opportunity because I'm from Montreal, Canada. When I come to Miami to have an excellent quality of shiwu and quality of lessons that sometimes it's very difficult to find elsewhere. So in the nice environment, good and high quality of learning and teaching, that's perfect. That's like we are close to Gan Eden. Thank you very much, Safra, for all this. Since the Safra Synagogue was built, I moved from plantation to Aventura because of the synagogue. I was waiting all this year for a Syrian synagogue to be open, so I'll be back with my family. It's a great honor and pleasure to be. I look every Shabbat to go there and see all my friends and the prayer and the melody. Otherwise, I'm home. Thank you much. Safra Synagogue uh, means to me uh, everything that I've been getting ready all my life uh, to participate uh, with a great community. Uh, that's what we're trying to fulfill in Safra. A great uh, community, a great family, uh, besides a, a place to, to pray. And it has a tremendous amount of uh, spirituality and energy. And I'm glad to be part of the uh, Minyan the family and the community. El Safra para mí es como mi segundo hogar. Me siento muy cómodo, tiene un rabino excepcional, un caal excepcional y es un lugar que me hace sentir como si no me hubiese ido de mi país de Argentina, es un caal espectacular. Muchas gracias por todo. I was there from the beginning. I was there from the North Tower and it means everything for us stay in Florida. The Safra Synagogue is our base, and we love it. I love it, and everybody loves it. We have a great rabbi. We're fortunate to have Rabbi Galamidi, and uh, all I have to say is it should last a thousand years. Beautiful place. It's uh, very warm. A lot of people that are wonderful people, and uh, I enjoy every day to come there. La sinagüa Zafra siempre significó para mí una total identificación con mi forma de ser y de pensar. Para mí, la vida en comunidad, la vida en una sinagoga con los demás correligionarios es imprescindible. Siempre lo ha sido a través de nuestra historia y más aún en nuestros días. Yo pienso que cada vez más 
la sinagoga debe brindar más servicios a sus correligionarios para poder hacerlos más útiles a la sociedad y al mundo en que están viviendo. Safra Sinagoga, ¿qué significa eso? Significa casi todo. Primero es mi familia, segundo es la sinagoga. Hemos estado ahí desde 2001, antes de eso, un año antes con el trailer. Then we start everything in 2001 and all the way till now. It's already 10 years. We are happy to be here. Celebrating with, we're celebrating with the whole Mishpuha. Everybody here is, is a Mishpaha. With just about 500 people here. We are very proud, very proud of this Kahila, of this community, the Sephardi community. Um, we wish the best to all of us and health and happiness and parasa to everybody. Continue the good job, everybody. Safa Synagogue uh, means to me like my second home. We learn there every morning. We come pray, morning, afternoon, Shabbat, taking care of the kids. It's great shul and we're having a great time. And uh, we meet Chaskim there. Safa is a beautiful place that uh, you get to meet a lot of people. You get to uh, see a lot of people, pray with everyone. It's such a beautiful closeness. Uh, and really, really, I, I really enjoy it. I look forward to uh, being in Safra, you know, every day. Safra Synagogues means a lot. On a daily basis, on a weekly basis, all year long. Not only we have now a huge family, we have a place of spiritual heights, and we have an amazing rabbi. And this is the place where to live. I feel very proud to belong to Safra. Eh, la sinagoga Safra eh, tal vez sea una de las eh, sinagogas más bonitas que hay en Miami. Eh, cuando usted entra a la sinagoga siente un calor humano que no lo siente en ninguna otra sinagoga. Y no solamente eso, es que hay tanta gente, plia y nada, viene de todas partes del mundo. Y es una alegría ver a tantos judíos de tantos distintos lugares. Y la verdad que es un placer ir todos los días a Safra y, y ver esa multitud. Azalto, the Safra Synagogue, it's a big pleasure, it's a big honor to be here this evening. I want to say something from the bottom of my heart, that Safra was there for me for many years, the years that there was no synagogue in the neighborhood, no Sephardic synagogue in the neighborhood, and I used to live there, and from the minute, Ten years ago, I would say, ten years ago, when I used to come pray in a caravan, I used to go visit the synagogue when it's under construction, and we used to walk in there and see all the differences and all the, the decoration that they're going to be do. And when it was finally finalized, we were so happy. It was a big joy in my heart to know that we're going to have a place to pray. And I'm so happy to see that there's Limo Torah, and we have a kollel on Mondays and Wednesdays, and it's a place that's thriving, and we have a rabbi like Rabbi Galmiri. That's, uh, that's helping us make this place be better, better and stronger. Mazal tov. pleasure and a privilege to recognize that we have with us tonight Chief Rabbi Bekshi Doron, who is here enjoying the festivities with us. It's a great hashub, it's a great misvah that we have the honor of his presence. Thank you, Rabbi, for being with us. Distinguished Rabbis, our outstanding honorees, their families and friends, special guests, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 10th anniversary dinner for Beth Edmund J. Safra. Yes, 
indeed a milestone epic event. Tenth anniversary. We indeed have a lot to be grateful for. Baruch Hashem. We appreciate your being here this evening. Our wonderful synagogue serves as an international magnet, drawing people from all countries of the world, near and far. Mexico, Brazil, Panama, Israel, Argentina, Lebanon, and even smaller countries like New York and New Jersey. We all blend together as one family. Tonight, we are honoring a few men and their wives and their families. We have Mr. Harry, Mr. and Mrs. Harry Tal from New Jersey and New York. We have Mr. and Mrs. Jack Capi from Brazil. We have Mr. and Mrs. Victor Azrak from Panama. We have Mr. and Mrs. Victor Diane from Panama. And we have Mr. and Mrs. Albert Tota from Mexico. These men and people are outstanding examples of men with characteristics unparalleled, midot of the highest level, charitable in many ways, supporters of institutions, schools, the love of Torah, and respect of all rabbis. These men are exceptional role models, and we can learn, learn to emulate them. We'll talk about each honoree a little later. For our synagogue, we sincerely owe our thanks to the men of vision, perception, and foresight to pursue, initiate, construct, and establish Beth Edmund J. Safra. These pioneers dedicated themselves to fulfill our community's growth. Let's go back 20, 25 years ago. A small number of men held Friday night and Saturday services in the North Tower. We owe a debt of gratitude for the men who started this minyan. Eddie Sitt, may he rest in peace. Mr. Sonny Gindi, Mr. Asi Harari, and our own honoree, Harry Towell. You had to be exceptionally quiet in that surroundings. You had to remove your yarmulke when you left the premises. During the week, daily prayers were held above the police station in public mall. After that, during the week, we were sometimes praying in synagogues along Dixie Highway. With the passing of time, once again, our leaders forged ahead, securing the land to construct our synagogue. We prayed in trailers then that served us until our synagogue was completed 10 years ago. Our first recognition is to Mr. Edmund J. Savra, Alave Shalom, himself. A man of vision, a man of philanthropy, you will be hearing more from our own esteemed Dr. Rabbi Eli Abadi, who will address you about Edmund J. Safra. Special token gratitude to Mrs. Lily Safra and the Edmund J. Safra Foundation. For their marvelous generosity towards tonight's event and their continued support throughout the years. Among the founders, Mr. Ralph Towell had the vision and foresight to acquire the land our synagogue stands on. Thank you. We give special mention of a refuah to Mr. David Bracker. Together with his, together with his son Ivor, he spearheaded the building of our synagogue with its magnificent elegance. They made it happen. 
We have to thank the sterling leadership of our past presidents, Mr. Ellie Sutton, Mr. Jack Bader, and myself. <clears throat> Today, our synagogue stands as a citadel of Torah learning, with continuous classes, minyanim, a father and son minyan, shiurs on a nonstop basis from our rabbi, our own rabbi Galamidi, who brings a tireless effort. constantly, consistently, relentlessly with the Brea Torah for all of us to learn. We owe a lot of gratitude and a strong Hazako Baruch to Rabbi Galamidi. Without further delay, it's my pleasure to introduce Rabbi Galamidi. Good evening, everyone. Meruchim Abaim, welcome to this special night of the Beth Edmond J. Safra Synagogue of Tenberry in which we are celebrating our 10th anniversary dinner. We'd like to welcome all of the great rabbis and distinguished guests that made the effort to be with us tonight. And I would like to personally welcome the Rishon Lezion, Rabbi Bakshi Doron Shelita, that is going to bless the entire community here present, as well as the same beautiful words of Torah. Bechavod, Rabbi Bakshi Doron, Arishon Lezion, Shelita, Bechavod. כבוד הרבנים, כבוד הקהל החדוש, כולם אהובים, כולם ברורים, אשרי עין ראתה כל אלה, וטוב שזכינו למעמד הזה. The rabbis, the rabbi starts blessing each and every one of the present kahal here, individually and collectively. The rabbi is very impressed by seeing the magnificent support and turned out of the beautiful kahal that came here tonight. The rabbi feels personally grateful and happy and joyous that he's here with all celebrating our 10th anniversary dinner. <laughs> אדמון ספרא, שרק השבוע היה יום היורצוי שלו, ואת בית הכנסת החדש כאן במיאמי, שהיום עשר שנים להימצאותו, וברוך השם, במשך השנה, הימים האלה ראיתי גם את מעלת בית הכנסת הזה. The rabbi expresses his thought about Mr. Edmond J. ספרא, עליו השלום, in which we all know that the day before Hanukkah was his 12th Askara memorial service and we are celebrating at the conclusion of Hanukkah our 10th anniversary dinner. The rabbi was here in the past and is able to see the growth and the development of our beautiful institution. <laughs> הכרתי עוד לפני ב-40 שנה בפעם הראשונה שבא לארץ לבית יע... ל... לשים אבן פינה לבית יעקב אצל חכם יעוב עתיר שהשם ישמעו וחיהו מאז, מ-40 שנה ברוך השם אני מכיר אותו, מכיר פעולו וקשור איתו was approximately 40 years ago when Mr. Safra came to Eres Israel, to the holy city of Yerushalayim to establish the foundation stone of an institution headed by Rabbi Yaakov Atiyeh. May he be well and have a long life. And he had always a great desire to pursue these goals of spreading synagogues of Torah and places of Torah studies as well. 
מה אדמון ספרא, וכל משפחת ספרא למעשה זה מושג של חסד, מושג של הצלחה, והוא היה מייסג את כל הדברים האלה בכבוד, בהדר ובגאון. מיסטר ספרא, together with his dear family, are a living example in our communities all over the world how they do great diligent work in the establishments of institutions of societies of kindness of chesed places of Torah studies and places of prayer to the Almighty על הכתוב שתולים בבית השם מחסרות אל ימי יפריחו אומרים חכמים שהקדוש ברוך הוא שותל בכל דור ודור צדיקים שהגנו על הדור. אותו דבר הקדוש ברוך הוא בכל דור ודור שותל אנשי חסד שיקימו את התורה ויחרו את עם ישראל. כמו אם היה מונט, כמו מונטיפיורי שהיה איש החסד, ש... ואותו דבר כמו רוטשילד, איש החסד של הדור הזה זה כמו אדמון ספרא. David Amelech writes in the book of Tehillim that in every generation Hashem appoints righteous men to be the eyes of the nation. Similarly, in every generation we find great men of vision, of abilities to establish many locations of chesed, of kindness. If we go through Jewish history in our past century and beyond, We come across the Rothschild family, we come across Sir Moshe Montefiore, and obviously in our generation, the Safra family name, specifically Mr. Edmond Safra, is a, siman, is a synonymous of what kindness and support of Torah and places of holiness are all about. <laughs> משפחת ספרא כולם מכירים ורואים אבל ה... אני רוצה לספר לכם מה הסוד, מה האמונה של משפחת ספרא. Many people when they hear the name of the ספרא family they may relate it only to a financial aspect of it different financial institutions but the rabbi from first-hand experience, would like to speak about the humility of the family, the humility of Mr. Edmond J. Safra, the elegance and the love to make sure that the Jewish nation continues to follow its beautiful traditions. Dear Kahal Kadosh, the treat that we're having tonight of being able to have in our presence the Rishon Lezion from Eres Israel is not something that happens every day or even once a year. So respectfully, we kindly ask the Kahal to please try to keep the volume down to enable the beautiful words of Torah of the Rabbi be heard by the entire Kahal Kadosh. Admon Safra Aya Musak Shel Chesed אבל יותר מזה היה מושג של אמונה. אני זוכר לפני שלושים שנה, בא פה לבר מצווה, בא לירושלים לבר מצווה, וביקש ממני בקשה, שהוא רוצה שעשרה זקנים יראו כל יום תהילים בכותל המערבי, ויברכו אותו בסוף כל ספר התהילים. והוא אמר, אני מוכן לשלם בשביל זה כל דבר. כשעשיתי את זה, שמעתי אחר כך שזה לא רק בכותל המערבי בירושלים, זה לא רק במאיר בעל הנס, היו שם, זה, זה, זה גם עשרה אנשים ב, ב, בבנק באמריקה, וכל פעם שהיה שואל אותי מה המצב, אם עומדים תהילים והכל ברוך השם, אבל האמונה שלו, זה נתן לו את הכוח ואת החוזק, ברוך השם. The generosity of Mr. Edmond Safra, alava shalom, there was an aspect of life which we all can learn from, the aspect of emunah. Emunah literally means faith in the Almighty, faith in Akadosh Baruch Hu. One time he came to Eres Israel 
I met the rabbi for a very joyous and happy occasion for the bar mitzvah and comes to the rabbi with a very peculiar request and he says dear hacham I want you to find for me 10 people that will recite diligently the entire book of Tehillim in the Kotel Ma'aravi, and at the conclusion of the reading they should bless me and my family later on the rabbi found out that this was not done only with him at the Kotel Ma'aravi, but in the Kever of Rabbi Meir Ba'al Anes, in holy sites all over Eres Israel, including in the United States. He believed in the power of prayer, in the power of tefillah, and his emunah in Hashem, his emunah in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, was non-negotiable. של אוניברסיטה, של כל בתי החולים, הרבה אדמון עשה בשקט, בצנעה, ואני יודע לספר כמה שעשה בלי שאף אחד יודע ובלי שאחד ירגיש. מתן בסתר, בצניעות, וזה היה חלקו מכל עמלו. Besides all of the public knowledge, generosity display, there was also an area which can only be, also be described as Matan Baseter, doing act of kindness and generosity without anyone knowing, which according to our Hachamim, this is a definitely very great level of charity and kindness. When it came to the distribution of Torah study books, the sponsorship of many items, to enhance the Torah observance and Torah study among the Jewish people. Well, אותו דבר ברוך השם גם את בית הכנסת הזה כאן במיאמי. אני זוכר עוד מזמן הדוד שלי, מרד קטן, היה בא כל שנה לארץ ומספר לי שהוא וידידו רלף טוויל רוצים לפתוח מניין במיאמי, וכל פעם היה מספר לי על המניין, עוד לא היה, לא היה בניין, אבל מניין כבר היה. The rabbi mentions that before the magnificent synagogue that we have currently, many years before that, he always came across people in which he was being told, we are planning to open up a synagogue in Miami. And for a while, it was in different stages, until Baruch Hashem, he was able to see personally, physically, with his own eyes, the beautiful establishment that we have, the beautiful synagogue, active with prayers, with Torah study, and the rabbi is very, very pleased, and he's sure that Mr. Safra Alava Shalom is smiling down from Shamayim, seeing how beautiful a small project or a dream became such a big reality. ואשרי מי שזוכה, ואיך אומרים בערבית, חזנה לעד מזלנה. יש מזל גדול למיאמי, שברוך השם, יש להם את הרבנים הגדולים שיחדו, את הרב גלמידי, שיכול, שהרים את הקרן של, של, של הקהילה כולה, וזה הזכות, וזה באנו לברך את כולכם. Almost a week, the rabbi landed from Panama City, I believe last Friday. He came to our synagogue every day for the services, for the activities, for the classes. And the rabbi is very impressed to see the beautiful services, the camaraderie between the people, the respect among the members, the affinity and the love that is found in our beautiful Kahal. The rabbi also congratulates the respectful rabbis of the city 
and the various individuals who work and devote themselves for the continued growth of our institution. I want to thank all the great God who came to the Lord of the Torah, to the Lord of the Knesset. I felt the Lord of 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 the Lord. היא רצון שתמיד תזכו להגדיל תורה ולהדירה, לראות בנים ובני בנים עוסקים בתורה ומצוות, בשמחה ובטוב לבב, אמן. אמן. The rabbi blesses the קהל קדוש with the same joy and happiness and excitement that he personally witnessed and experienced throughout these days and especially tonight magnificent event that Ben Porat Yosef we reach or exceeded even our initial expectations that everyone should be blessed with great health, with great blessing, with, with, with happiness and joy from the respective families. And this celebration that we experience tonight should be a catalyst for the great mazal and great blessing that is coming our way to the way of the Beth Edmond J. Safra Sephardic Synagogue of Tenberry. Thank you very much. Hazako Baruch. Hacham, Shela Mizvot. Dear Kahal Kadosh, we have a beautiful program lined up. We have a special video presentation that arrived to our hands literally over 24 hours ago, especially recorded by the Chief Rabbi of Israel, Rabbi Amar and a special synagogue video presentation as well. At the same time, or at this time, I would like to welcome our dear friend and colleague, Rabbi Eli Abadi from the, Bet, from the Edmond J. Safra Synagogue of New York City. Rabbi Abadi does not really need my introduction. A dear friend, a great Golic, a great example of how to lead communities, especially communities related to the Safra synagogues. It is my kavod, my honor, and my privilege to welcome Rabbi Eliyahu Avadi Bechavod. Thank you, Rabbi Galamidi, for the invitation and for the honor to speak tonight. Kavod Maran Harishon Lesion, Harav Arashi Israel. הרב הגאון אליהו בקשי דורון, כי לא יאה, כי לא נאה לקבל הדרת פניו בברכת ברוך שחלק מחוכמתו לרעיו. אסטים צ'יף רבי, ראשון לציון הרב הגאון אליהו בקשי דורון, honorable rabbis, honorees, distinguished guests. gives me a great pleasure and honor to be here with you this evening to participate in such a glorious occasion, the celebration of the 10th anniversary of Beit Edmond Safra Synagogue. I remember very well when it all started in an apartment in one of the towers, then the trailers and then the magnificent edifice that it occupies now. This synagogue and many others around the world have come to existence due to the generosity of Edmond Safra Alava Shalom. His devotion to God was evident in his own traditional practices. His devotion to personal prayer and synagogue attendance was well known. Despite his hectic schedule, Edmond always took the time to acknowledge his thanks to God. The many synagogues which were built by him attests to his belief that in every part of the world people should find a house of worship. He enabled many to follow in his footsteps and to maintain a connection to Judaism and to God. Edmund's love of God was truly reflected in his love of Jewish causes and practices and of the people that represented those causes and practices. Edmund Safra was a deeply religious man and throughout his life he remained faithful to Jewish tradition and dedicated himself to the preservation of Jewish heritage. He financed the restoration, construction and maintenance of so many synagogues, schools and yeshivot in more than 30 countries around the world. He also supported numerous other causes such as hospitals, schools, 
universities, cultural institutions, and humanitarian associations throughout Israel and around the world. He founded ICEF, the International Sephardic Education Foundation, an organization that has made higher education possible for over 13,000 gifted Israeli students from underprivileged backgrounds. A story is found in the Talmud of Rabbi Hamab, the son of Hanina of the third century, who commented, it is written, Vehalachta bidrachav, and follow in God's ways. And he asked, can someone follow the divine presence, the Shekhinah? And he answers, rather emulate God's qualities. God clothes the naked, so too you should clothe the naked. God provides for the sick and infirm, so too you should provide for the sick and the infirm. God provides for the deceased, so too you should provide for the deceased. God consoles the downtrodden, so too you should console the downtrodden. We look to God for his benevolence and wisdom. We believe that God finds favor in those that emulate his qualities. Our goal is to emulate God in our daily action so that he may find favor in us. When God created man in the book of Bereshit, it is written that man is fashioned in the image of God, Beselem Elohim. I believe that Edmond Safra Alava Shalom was such a person designated by, by God, a person who could immediately assess a situation where there was a deficiency and to try to repair that void. Edmond was not simply a wealthy financier who gave of his fortune because in the culture of the wealthy, one must share with others or because that is the politically correct thing to do. In Masichet Ketubot teaches that a person must do his best to understand the needs of others. Edmund intuitively understood the nature of giving and did as instinctively as one would expect God to do. His generosity is both apparent and hidden. In his lifetime, he was not in the habit of using his name when donating institutionally. He often used the name of his parents, Yaakov and Esther, in order to pay them respect. His humility was well known, perhaps equal if not more to his generosity. Edmund was able to attain the highest levels of giving during his lifetime. He was not interested in his own self-promotion. He simply wanted to alleviate the burden of those less fortunate than himself. Born in Ale, Lebanon in 1932, Edmond Safra was just 16 when he went to Milan to work on behalf of his family's banking business. He used his considerable talents and the acumen he developed working alongside his late father, Yaakov Savra Alava Shalom, to extend his family's reputation for trust throughout the world. In Israel, Edmund gave significant support to Yeshivat Porat Yosef, the oldest Sephardic yeshiva in the country overlooking the Western Wall. The Beit Midrash inside the yeshiva is named Beit Yaakov, after his beloved father. He also restored the graves of Rabbi Meir Baal Anes and Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai in Tiberias and ensured that Torah would always be studied there by opening yeshivot and Talmud Torahs at sacred places. Edmund's devotion to the Lebanese Syrian tradition was manifested in his support for institutions in numerous countries including Argentina, like Shuba Israel, Sukkot David and Yosod Haddad, in France, Ecole Otsara Torah, Alliance Israelite Universelle. In Mexico, Yeshiva Keter Torah. In Venezuela, the United States, the former Soviet Union, and in many other places, too numerous to name them. If I want to remain faithful to the time, I am allotted to speak. Edmund donated many Sifre Torah and sacred books to Yeshivot, synagogues, and Kolelim. Additionally, in 1996, he purchased the Albert Einstein manuscripts and donated them to the Israeli Museum because he wanted to ensure that the special theory of relativity would be displayed for centuries to come in the state of Israel. Edmund touched so many lives in so many places. During his lifetime and later, he was indeed a prince amongst his people and he shall always be remembered as such. He exemplified not only the fulfillment of the commandments between man and God, Ben Adam Lamakom, but also excelled in the commandments between man and his fellow man, Ben Adam Lahavero. His attention to the plight and need of the downtrodden 
to the needy and the poor far surpassed any other mortal. On a personal note, I was the recipient of Edmund's generosity myself. As a student at the Jacob E. Safra Institute of Sephardic Studies at Yeshiva University, during my years at the Rabbinical College, I accompanied my father, Hacham Abraham Abadi Alava Shalom, who had a long-standing relationship with Edmond, dating back to the time when they were both living in Lebanon. During one of the last meetings that took place between my father and Edmund at the bank, my father introduced me to Mr. Safra and explained to him that I was studying to become a rabbi. He looked at me and mentioned the need for young Sephardic rabbis in the community. His comment echoes an ironic foreshadowing of things to come. He told my father, I, I am sure your son Eli will provide a tremendous service to the community. 27 years later, I am privileged and honored to be serving as the rabbi and spiritual leader of the Edmond J. Safra Synagogue in New York City a synagogue that he so yearned to build for Manhattan's Jewish community, a synagogue that is now in our ninth anniversary, but in less than three years of existence, became the center of Jewish communal life in the Upper East Side of Manhattan. In addition, I serve as the director of the Jacob E. Safra Institute of Sephardic Studies at Yeshiva University, the same place where I studied and where Edmar Alava Shalom contributed. One of Edmund's dreams seen to fruition under the guidance of his dear wife Lily was the establishment of that Sephardic synagogue in the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Mrs. Lily Safa continued to spearhead his endeavor. The synagogue was completed in December 2002. A Hanukkah Bet Knesset was celebrated and Israel's chief rabbi Rishon LeSion Hacham Eliyahu Bakshi Doron, who is present with us tonight, was present to inaugurate the Bet Knesset in the city. Shortly before he died in 1999, Edmund established and endowed the Edmund J. Safra Philanthropic Foundation, ensuring that needy individuals and organizations would continue to receive assistance and encouragement for many years to come. The legacy of Edmund Safra Alava Shalom lives on because of the continuation of his good work through the effort of his wife, Mrs. Lily Safra. May God bless her through those involved in the foundation which bears his name and through all those who perpetuate his name and legacy by participating in charitable endeavors that he so championed. Much praise is found for those involved in the giving of themselves. One statement in particular comes to my mind from the Zohar in Bereshit. And it says, whom God's love, he sends a golden opportunity for help that much praise should be given to those who founded, dedicated, and helped build this bet at Mont Safra Synagogue. For the last 10 years and even before, you have toiled, given of yourself and of your time to make this synagogue a success. As its namesake in Manhattan and in Deal, this synagogue has become an international place. People from all over the world flock to it from spiritual, for spirituality and personal growth. From the Patagonia to Alaska, from Europe to Asia, people have come here to find spirituality, religiosity, Torah learning, and communal life. I have personally seen it grow from its inception, as I come here to spend every summer and enjoy all of its services. I congratulate, commend, and admire the honorees of tonight, my dear friends who I know personally and are known for their generosity, kindness, munificence, and benevolence. Mr. Ralph Towell, Mr. Harry Towell, Mr. Jacques Khafif, Mr. Victor Dayan, Mr. Albert Tota. and Mr. Victor Azrak. Felicidades y que Dios los bendiga. May Hashem continue to bless you with long, healthy, and happy life, with the opportunity to celebrate many semachot in your families, and He may continue to give you the wherewithal to help for many years to come. 
I will remiss if I don't mention here Mr. David Braca for his for his absolute dedication and foresight to bring the synagogue to reality. May Hashem give him a refuah shelema and a long healthy life. Of course, also to his son Ivor, my dear friend, who continues in his footsteps. <laughs> Ivor, may Hashem continue to give you the wisdom and the ability to continue to lead. A special commendation and gratitude goes to Rabbi Yosef Galimidi. for his leadership, dedication, devotion, and commitment to the synagogue and the community. Under his leadership, the synagogue has flourished and developed in a most dignified and distinguished way. The building of the mikvah is a testament to his efforts and spiritual leadership. Hazaku Baruch Hacham. May all of you continue to perpetuate the good name of Edmond Safar Alava Shalom and may live on your acts of charity and loving kindness. I just want to conclude by saying that may God bless those who unite to form synagogues for prayers and those who come there to pray, those who provide lamps for light and wine for Kiddush and Habdalah, food for visitors and charity for the poor and all who faithfully occupy themselves with the, with the needs of the community. May the Holy One, blessed be He, give them their reward. May He re remove from them all illness, grant them complete healing, and forgive all their sins. May He send blessing and success to all the work of their hand. In conclusion, our Hachamim explained that all synagogues are considered Mikdash Mi'at, a small sanctuary a part of the great temple of Solomon, the Beta Mikdash. Throughout our history, synagogues have served as the place for supplication, prayer, and communion with God. And so we pray that indeed this Beit Edmond Safra synagogue will be that Mikdash Mi'at, where the prayers of all people will be heard and answered. May this synagogue not only be a place of worship, but also a place to touch eternity, and help others find a meaning and purpose in their lives. As King Solomon declared upon the inauguration of the Beta Mikdash, may your eyes, O Hashem, be looking to this house day and night so you, you could accept all the prayers of the people and forgive their inequities. If rain shall be lacking, then they shall pray and be answered. If famine shall be threatened, then they shall pray and be answered. Indeed, every prayer and supplication that one will have, even to pour their heart for they know what afflicts them, they shall be answered. Even when a Gentile shall come and pray to you, you shall hear him. And when a war shall be contemplated, they shall pray to you and you shall hear. They shall all return to you with all their hearts and all their soul and all their might. And you shall bring them back since they are your chosen people. Amen, Kenny Hirason, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rabbi Eliyahu Abadi Shelita from the Edmond J. Safra Synagogue of New York City. At this time, we would like to welcome a young man, a young family from our community, our dear friend, banker, originally from Argentina. Mr. Leandro Bucay, Bechavod. That in a few moments they will be performing live from Aventura. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I am here tonight to speak about the Fire and Youth Project, the Fire and Youth Program. This project started about one year ago. It was Sukkot of last year. The shul was crowded with people from all over the world and the kids were running around playing and some of them unfortunately going and crossing the line of what playing is. Some kids at that time, Sukkot 2010, broke down the elevator, putting their life in danger. It was a big thing, simultaneously some kids also uh, did similar things 
which were brought to the attention of the rabbi and the board. The rabbi immediately consulted with the board and they decided that they needed to do something. These are the kids of the synagogue, our future. A week later, by Simchat Torah, the rabbi, Rabbi Galimidi, Yosef Galimidi, formally announced the implementation of a father and youth program. It was a program that came along with plenty of challenges, financially, logistically, and spiritually. Financially, it meant that now we needed to hire a youth director, a rabbi that would stay along with the kids and would make them grow in Torah, Mitzvot, and Maasim Tovim. Logistically, where were you going to put the kids? Are you going to use the coffee room? or were you going to rent a trailer? And probably the most important one, spiritually. Are the kids going to stay two or three hours focused, learning and praying? Do you have enough kids to be able to start the project? How would you know that the kids would want, in the first place, to be part of a father and youth project? All of these were big challenges. However, the rabbi and the board were stubborn to go ahead with it. My dear friends, it's been one year since the implementation of the Father and Youth Project. And Baruch Hashem, we can say now, tonight, that it's a big success. It brings a lot of pride. It's a source of pride for the Safra community. We have plenty of people from all over the world coming and trying to copy in it, asking us how they can copy it, how they can make it happen at their own synagogues, locally. For us, today, we are happy to be able to serve as an example for them. I would like to tell about uh, an incident that happened two months ago. Rabbi Galimidi, along with uh, former president, Mr. Jack Beira, our dear president, Avi Franco, Eddie Misri, and other board members came up to the Father and Son Minyan on a Shabbat day. Rabbi Yosef Galimidi formally announced that Mr. Jack Beira was donating $26,000 in honor. He was donating $26,000 in honor of his son, Joey Beira. Alaba Shalom. This was being done for the continuity of the Father and Son Youth Program. At that time, we were all in shock. I remember being in the room, and I tried to give some words of thankfulness and gratefulness towards Mr. Jack Beira. When he had the chance to talk, he said that he was not doing this because he was just a nice man. He was doing this because he knew that this was an investment. He was planting a seed on our future generations. At the time, it was then when I realized that not only Mr. Jack Beira was just a, a nice man, like he said he wasn't. That could be debatable. But what for sure, he's a very wise man. He has plenty of chokhmah. And he knows that he is investing in a project that has unmeasurable rewards, which are priceless. Our future, the future of our synagogue. Could you only imagine if only one person, one of these kids, would do teshuvah, would keep on growing in Torah, Mitzvot, and Maasim Tovim? for the growth of our synagogue, that alone would be mission accomplished. If it were only for the good companionships and good friends that these kids are making in the Minyan, this alone would be mission accomplished. However, so far, after one year, we have, done, we have been able to accomplish much more than that. Baruch Hashem. And we're going for more. I would like to thank just a few people before I finish. Number one is Rabbi Yosef Galimidi. He is the mastermind of this project. He was the one who started it. 
our guidance and our engine. With all my respect, Rabbi, this is your baby. Um, thanks to Mr. To President A.B. Franco, Mr. Jack Beda, Abraham Abadi, and all board members. Thank you to Linda and Sandra, our pillars at the office. Thank you to Justin. Thank you to David Soar and Paul Feldman. Thank you to the Moyal family and his father-in-law. Daniel Dayana, our great Gazan, who silently supports the Minyan financially, emotionally, and spiritually, week after week. Thank you, Danny. Ari Jamal and those, all those boys that do not have kids yet, but are still part of the project because they believe in it. To those who cross the bridge every single Shabbat, like the Abu Habs, in order to come to the Minyan. A special thanks to my brother, Rabbi, Gali, uh, Rabbi Eliyahu Bukai, who sits with his students week after week to make them grow into Ramis Bot and Masim Tobim. He runs around Aventura to get the pizza for them and to find the best deals in toys, and the, in toys for the kids. He searches into different ways to motivate them, like the soccer league that he organized, made up of six Sephardic synagogues. We have here the jerseys of the Safra Synagogue, and we're number one in the rank so far in the tournament. Thank you, Rabbi Eliyahu. Thank you, brother, for all your support and for giving, you, for giving all your heart and, and, and being a source of inspiration. And finally, I would like to make a thank, the most important thank of all the night. And that is to the kids, to these kids that are on my left-hand side and their parents. They make the father and son youth program a reality. It is for you boys that the Safra Minyan Youth Minyan is a big success. Thank you. Let 
are our future Hazanim. God bless you all. Thank you, thank you so much. Beautiful job. Good job. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. We would like to invite to the stage to sing with us the man that made it possible for us to be a part of the Safra Synagogue. Please welcome Rabbi Yosef Kalamidi. <laughs> tonight, one minute now, for the first honoree, Mr. Harry Towell. Mr. Harry Towell is a man we can all learn from. The man is a man of Hersed, Torah, 
He's a living institution. Won't miss a minyan. He's devoted to Dara, charitable institutions, promoting schools, institutions, all of his life. As a matter of fact, when he, many years ago, in the Bradley Meach minyan, to create and stimulate the children, to make them interested in Torah and to come to shul, he was the man that brought baseball stars on Sundays to come to the crowd to, so the kids can learn. He brought Juan Sabota, he brought other players, he made the kids interested in Torah. He saw the light that if you bring the kids in, you can expand the Torah to other horizons. What a man, what a vision, what a person, what a personality. And let me tell you something, it was so good and we learned so much, I became part of his family. My son married his granddaughter. <laughs> That's how much we were impressed with Mr. Harry Towell. It's without further ado, I'd like to come down to you, Harry, one second. No more. Mrs. Towell, this is actually, mommy. This is for you, Mrs. This Towell. This first, this is for you. This, this is for you. It's a token of appreciation. This is also Birkata Bayit. This is Birkata Bayit, presented to Mr. and Mrs. Harry Towell. It's a wonderful thing. It's just a token of our appreciation of being the people you are and the honorees that we have. You make our evening special, you make our people special, and you are special people. That's why we're here to acknowledge you and give you the kabod, respect, and honor you deserve. God bless you both. You know, it's not every day they can have such a roster of some special, special people. Our next honoree is a man that if you ever look at him all the time, you get a mirror image, a wonderful smile comes right back at you. Mr. Victor Dayan, Mr. and Mrs. Victor Dayan are real quality, special people. <clears throat> Just to know him, to acknowledge them, to speak to them. His face radiates. It's a glow coming from him. He emanates a beautiful position all the time, a beautiful display of making you feel happy to greet him, to speak to him, to talk to him. Mr. Victor Dayan arrived from Halab. He went to Panama in 1959. A special man. He belonged to the Shevet Ahim the shul in Panama. <clears throat> Here's another man devoted to hesed, kindness, giving to institutions, never, never forsaking something. If he can give, he will give. He's always part of the action. He's a man and a woman. They're fabulous people. We have and proper, we're so proud to have them as our honorees. <clears throat> We'd like to present to you the following. Victor, would you like to come up? Please. Thank you for those that beautiful words. Oh, yes, better words. Thank you, Mrs. Mrs. Dan, that's for you. Talking about appreciation, good things. Thank you. Victor, this is for yourself. Oh, oh, ah, I'm beautiful. So, from the bottom, it says, present to Mr. and Mrs. Victor Dan. The next honoree, Mr. Victor Farage Azrak. a very active committee member of the great synagogue of Panama, Shevet Ahim. He's known as a man of honesty, good character, charitable in every aspect of life. Together with his partners and family, they live an exemplary way of generosity and kindness to the community, to the fellow men. If you look at him whenever he comes to the synagogue, he's always with a smile, which David Melech writes about this in the book of Tehillim, 
serve God, serve the Almighty with great joy and great happiness. It is my pleasure to welcome Mr. Victor Farage Azrak and his dear wife, Bechavod. Our next honoree is a wonderful gentleman that comes all the way from Mexico City, Mr. Albert Tota. A longtime member of Alianza Monte Sinai in Mexico City. Mr. Tota and his dear wife, Ms. Lori Tota, they are outstanding supporters of a particular institution in Mexico known as the Talmud Torah, devoting endless hours, volunteering from their own free time for the benefit and the development of their community. Whenever you see Mr. Tota at the synagogue, you see someone that prays beautifully. It has a certain level of decorum of kavod to the Betakneset, to the Mikdash Me'at. It is our great kavod to welcome Mr. and Mrs. Tota Bechavod. Mazal Tov, Mabruk to the Totah family on this very special night. Our final honoree tonight is someone very special to many of us here. Someone that comes all the way from Sao Paulo, Brazil, Mr. and Mrs. Jack Kafif. On the start or see that. I'm going to speak a little bit in Portuguese so everybody from the Brazilian community understands. É muito prazer para mim e para nós da Sinagoga Beth Edmond J. Safra dar um honor tão especial para nosso estimado senhor Jacques Cafif, uma pessoa de integridade, boa smidot, sempre com alegria, tratando de ajudar para acrescentar a nossa sinagoga e nossa entidade. I like to give the opportunity for Mr. Jacques Cafif to say a few words before we make the presentation. I am glad to be the only South American leadership who joined the New Yorkese leadership that project this synagogue and I would like to express my tribute to Mr. David Braca and I would like to thank all the staff who work during 10 years, who run this synagogue during these 10 years, as the president, Mr. Eli Sutton, Mr. Abe Franco, Mr. Jack Beda, and again, Mr. Abe Franco. Also, for uh, the chief of committees, and especially uh, Rab Yusef Galimidis, who has done a very wonderful job, a very wonderful work 
giving to this synagogue the maximum of powers. This synagogue is, it's a big synagogue. It is a synagogue of a big community. It's a synagogue that have the maximum of activities and always very busy. Thanks for and give to this synagogue to be an international synagogue. I begin with my friends, meus amigos brasileiros, meus irmãos. Muito obrigado ter vindo aqui em massas honrar nossa festa e honrar vossa presença conosco. To meus amigos, para meus amigos de México, Panamá, Venezuela, Argentina, muchas gracias pelo suporte e para a frequência maciça em nossa sinagoga. Je profite Je profite pour dire de bienvenue aux Français, Marocains, Algériens, Tunisiens, qui sont avec nous. Et anche mes amigos, mes fratelli de Milano, Italia. Gente, esa sinagoga es una sinagoga internacional, es una comunidad internacional. Batemos palmas para todos que trabajaron ahí. Dear Kahal Kadosh, we would like everyone to direct yourself to the screens. We are going to be showing a special video from Eres Israel, from the chief Sephardic rabbi, Rabbi Shilomo Moshe Amar, a video that has been recorded especially for this very auspicious occasion. I want to thank the community of Jacob, that is the name of Edmond Safra, in Miami, that have been a long time for 10 years מאז שהוא כאן בית הכנסת בית יעקב וברוך השם יש בו תפילות כסדרן ושיעורי תורה ואני מקווה שיחזקו עוד יותר את שיעורי התורה וירבו קדושה וירבו פעילות ענפה וחינוכית לבני הקהילה וגם לאלה שבאים בזמן הקיץ והחופשים שבאים למיאמי שימצאו את המקום של אל הרינה ולתפילה, תורה וגם תפילה ביחד. ויהי נועם אדוני אלוהינו עלינו, מעשי ידינו כהן עלינו, מעשי ידינו כהן עלינו, שתהיה שכינה במעשי ידיהם, ויצליחו, ויהיה בנחת ובשמחה, ויעשו שם תורה בשמחה עם שמחות של הילדים. בבריאות וברכה לכל המשתתפים שיזכו לחיים טובים ונאמר אמן. The rabbi in brief congratulates the Bet Edmond J. Safra Synagogue, its leadership, all its members for celebrating such a beautiful milestone. Rabbi Amar, as many of you may have known, was here with us in the beginning of 2010 when it came the dedication, or rather, the planning for the mikveh, as well as the beautiful Sefer Torah dedication. The rabbis mention that our synagogue is a synagogue that knows no seasons. In the summer, we welcome all the South Americans and Central American visitors. In the winter, we welcome our friends from the north and from the south in this time of the year. A synagogue full of joy, full of happiness, and full of greatness. The rabbi blesses everyone that may be the will of the Almighty, that the same happiness and joy that we experience in these days should be a catalyst for the next decade 
coming up into our life. Amen. For the refuah shelema of our chairman emeritus, Mr. David Braca Sr. May Hashem give him a refuah shelema and we should have good news very soon. Yes, many people gave me a lot of credit tonight. I think was a bit exaggerated. But without his participation from the embryo status of our synagogue and the continuous involvement, not only of Mr. David Braca Sr., but his son Ivor here present as well and his family, what we have today in our location may have not been possible. Distinguished rabbis, committee members, Mr. President A.B. Franco, the Honorable Past Presidents of the Synagogue, Mr. Eli Sutton, and Mr. Jack Bader. The Bet Edmond J. Safra Synagogue, without a doubt, is one of the most distinguished, proactive, and international, has multi-generational, Five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. Synagogue of the world. We are blessed to have with us our dear Hazan Yonatan Hen. <laughs> that Shabbat after Shabbat, holiday after holiday, enhances our prayer with the light will voice. Rabbi Hanania Abisrur, the early riser of the synagogue, with a year-long Vatican Minyan and beautiful Torah classes starting between 4.30 and 5 a.m. when many of us may be sleeping or some of us are just waking up. The wonderful ladies of the Bikul Holim. <laughs> who week after week, holiday after holiday, devote from the valuable time to visit hospitals, nursing homes, and the less fortunate. Rabbi Eliyahu Bukai Lucas for the excellent job he has done with the father and son Minyan from a dream, from challenging comments became a true reality. Hazako Baruch, may you walk under the chuppah very soon. Amen. <laughs> Mrs. Ninette Berger, week after week, giving the Torah class in Spanish, as well as making possible the ability of many of our wonderful ladies being able to pray from a sidur. Hazaku Baruch, may you see your daughters under the chuppah very soon. Amen. Rabbi Crispin, that gives beautiful Torah classes in Hebrew in the lobby, due to the lack of suitable space in our synagogue. Hazaku Baruch. Mora Orli Dromi, that diligently, Shabbat after Shabbat, together with my youngest daughter, Nechama, as well as Hannah Fabian. They take care of the wonderful girls and boys groups downstairs in the breakfast room. A playground may be coming your way very soon. Amen. <laughs> Two particular people, Mr. Mickey Carey, our distinguished and elite Baal Kore, as well as Mr. Moises Frastai, for diligently reading the Sefer as many times which is necessary. Hazaku Baruch for that. There is a young lady in the crowd, I believe. I'm not sure she's still here yet. But someone who really 
does not have an official title in the synagogue, but truly does a lot for the success, the growth, and the development of the synagogue, Mrs. Michelle Needle. Someone that sometimes from remote control or even being in town takes care of many aspects of the synagogue. I would like to mention two young men, Mr. Ari Jamal, for developing our highly acclaimed website, www.safraflorida.com. Ari Hazaku Baruch for investing hundreds of hours and exposing our synagogue to the world. I feel that this website is like your future baby coming your way very soon. Amen. There is a young man who never says no whenever I call him to come and help the synagogue. A young man, a teenager named Gabriel Fabian. Hazaku Baruch Gabriel for helping us in every aspect. There is a young man that came all the way from England, Sir Justin Bryant, which many of you know him as plain Justin, a soldier in the army of the Queen, a young man that is always ready to do anything that is necessary for the Kahal, for the Minyanim. Thank you, Justin, for all your help. You see the card setting, the placings, many areas that you see tonight behind the scene is being given with a great token, perhaps, of gratitude to first, Mrs. Linda Devine from our office. And especially, and especially with capital S, Mrs. Sandra Levy here present. Without a doubt, since her arrival to the office, I can say that our synagogue move on if we were in the major leagues before I think that we are in the World Series now thank you Sandra for your diligence for your refinement and for being really a partner in tonight's program and everything else there is a young lady in the community that had helped the synagogue of creating an image that in the last six months, and God willing, in the next six months, will be even greater. Her name is Miss Michelle Wahba. <laughs> dear wife of our dear Mesader Eli Wahba, here present as well. She had developed, without exaggeration, maybe 5,000 emails back and forth between Sandra and her and I, and hundreds of hours in everything that you saw about tonight and our a beautiful upcoming journal that will be produced after this event. Thank you, Mrs. Wahba, for your diligence and your willingness and your continuous smile willing to help the shul to grow in leaps and rounds. My dear friends, the hour is late. Tomorrow morning we have a full day of activities and tefillot. So I'm very grateful for each and every one of the kahal that came, that called, that participated, that supported. But I think above all, we need 